So next thing I want to talk about a little bit is, you know, how do we define exactly how transnational a corporation is? Well, first of all, one of the things I think is unfortunate is that while there are 82,000 transnational corporations, um, most of the parent firms of the largest transnationals are based in the most developed countries of the world, the US, Europe, and Japan. And the reason, of course, would be because it's the developed countries that have corporations with sufficient capital to develop overseas operations. It's, uh, that's, that's exactly why. It's the US, the European, the Japanese companies that have the sufficient capital to put themselves into overseas markets. Now, sometimes we get asked, well, can we measure how transnational a corporation is? Well, this is a re really weird one, right? So how can we measure it? Well, first of all, you can say like the ratio of domestic to foreign operations. So you can say, I'm a US-based company, and I do 5% of my operations in France, therefore I'm a multinational, and my competitor does 2% of their operations in France, so we're more multinational than that other company. You can say the number of foreign countries entered. I always love these corporations that's, you know, American corporations say, well, we're an international corporation because we have one office two miles from across into Canada, you know, two miles from the Canadian border. So therefore we're an international organization. Well, you know, are they more or less international than someone that has, you know, a branch, you know, a dozen branches in France versus the one branch in Canada? I, I don't know. So you can look at the number of countries actually entered. You could look at the size of foreign direct investment. So for example, we invest X number of dollars or you know, a certain percentage of our overall budget into uh, our overseas operations. You can look at the geographic span of operations. So as a country, an American firm that has one branch in Japan, more multinational than an American firm that has 10 offices in Canada because Japan's farther away. I don't know. You could look at the extent of the global integration in the production chain. So do they produce a certain number uh, of components internationally versus domestically? And then what's the national diversity among shareholders, employees, managers, and directors? You, know, you could say, for example, we are an international company because we have one manager from Canada. Um, how in the world do you measure the international diversity of shareholders? I couldn't even begin to tell you. I used to do research in corporate governance and, you know, trying to quantify data on shareholders is a very difficult task. So there is a transnationality index. And the transnational the transnationality index gives you an average of three ratio ratios: foreign assets to total assets, foreign sales to total sales, and foreign employment to total employment. And that is one way of looking at it. The question that you have to ask yourself is: What do these numbers even tell you? Is it even a useful exercise to calculate? What message are you trying to use? You can pick any figure that you wish. Just figure out the message you want to say. Is it important to actually even be considered a transnational corporation for you as a manager? Um, I mean, you can manipulate the statistics any which way you want to show that you're more or less transnational than any of your competitors. You can make the statistics work for you. So, in our next module, we're going to talk about foreign direct investment. I'll see you then.